it's interesting to look at some families of, of, of shapes in sequence and compute the number of standard tableau for them. Let's look at squares. Let's call it one by one. Let's call it two by two. Let's call this three by three, uh, three by three, four by four, etc. cetera. Uh, four by four. And how many standard young tableau are there for, of these shapes? One. Uh, two, uh, there, are, there are obviously two standard young tableau of that shape, right? Because just to show you what's going on, you have, but you've got to put the one there, you've got to put the four there, and there are two choices for where to put the other numbers. So there's two there, and we just uh, saw that the number of these is 42, and uh, the number of four by four standard young tableau, I'm not going to do the computation, but it's it's some much larger number. So I could go on forever. An interesting sequence, maybe I'll just do this one. If I have tableau uh, shapes, rather, with just two rows of the same length, so this would be this shape we've called 1-1, one, one. this we've called 2-2, two, two. this would be called 3-3, three, three. this is 4-4, four, four. so I'm talking about the, the sequence, etc. And how many standard young tableau are there? Well, obviously there's one here because there's only one way to satisfy the, the rules. There's two here, we've seen that before. Here there are five, and here there are 14. And if I were to do the next one, uh, five, five, it would be 42. And this is a very famous sequence of numbers. If you look it up online, uh, this is a sequence that all combinatorialists know extremely well. It has many, many interesting and deep pro properties. They're called Catalan numbers. That's a video for another day. Yes, I want to talk a bit about the process of, of proving that this result is correct. The first thing, a, a really truly wonderful proof is based on probability. In fact, this is the best proof, really. There's no question about it. I'm going to use this notation, f sub shape, where that represents a generic shape, equals number of standard Young tableau of shape, whatever that is. The theorem is that this is equal to n factorial, where n is the number of cells, divided by the product, and this symbol means the, the product over a bunch of terms that I'm not about to pi, the famous number. That's right. It just means product of h sub x, where h sub x is the hook number of cell x. So, for example, if x is that cell right there, then the hook number is, is the number of cells in its hook. So you compute all those numbers and divide by the product, divide n factorial by the product, and that gives you this, the number of standard Young tableau. So that's the result. Another way to think about that, it's, this is completely equivalent. I can write it this way. It's saying that f sub shape, the number of standard Young, young tableau of that shape, divided by n factorial, is equal to the product. I'm using the same symbol again to represent the product of the following numbers of 1 over h sub x. You so just that, rearranged the I'm equation. Just, I've just rearranged the equation. That I've done nothing fancy at all. But I can now think of the left-hand side of this as a probability. And the reason is because n factorial is the number of ways of just sprinkling the numbers 1 through n into this shape without regard to any rules whatsoever. And this is the number that do satisfy the rules. Therefore, if you were to pick a random sprinkling of numbers, the probability of it being a standard tableau would be this probability. So that's what, exactly what this says. Yeah. So this is a statement about probability. And so the question is, why is this statement true? Well, I'll, let's look at a particular example. Two by two, we know that the number of standard tableau is two. The hook numbers we've seen before, one, two, two, three. So n is four. So I'm saying that if I arrange the numbers from 1 to 4 in this shape, the probability that they will satisfy, they will have these inequalities, the probability of it being standard, standard Young tableau, is 1 third times 1 half times 1 half, uh, which is 1 twelfth. And the, no the total number of arrangements is 24, so n factorial is 4 factorial, which is 24, and 24 times 12 is 2. So that's, that's why f sub lambda is 2. It worked. Now, let's see if we can make a reasonably convincing argument of this. If I look at this shape, let me just call its entries a, b, c, 
and D. So imagine I've taken the numbers from 1 to 4, and I've put them in this shape randomly in, in, in any one of the 24 fact, uh, 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 in, uh, four factorial or 24 ways. What's the probability that uh, A will be less than B, and A will be less than C, and B will be less than D, and C will be less than D? That's what it would mean to be standard. The probability that A is less than B and A is less than C, A, B, and C are just three numbers, and if they are arranged randomly, the probability that A will be the smallest of the three is one-third. So that sort of takes care of the question about uh, whether A will be the number that it should be. If I look at B and D, for example, then uh, the probability that B is less than D, again, if the four numbers were arranged randomly, is obviously one half because either B is less than D or D is less than B, and they're both equally likely, so that's one half. And similarly, if I look at C and D, the probability that uh, C is less than D, well, that's also one half for the same reason. Now, what, what I'm writing down here are essentially all the rules. The rules to be a standard Young tableau are that A is less than B, A is less than C, B is less than D, and C is less than D. So what's the probability that all the rules are satisfied? Answer, I take one-third times one-half times one-half, and I get one-twelfth, which is exactly what it should be. So I've proved that, that the answer, I've, I've proved that this result is correct by, by this argument. With one shape? With this shape. I've, il I've illustrated the argument in this, in this, for, for this particular shape. More generally, I can do the same thing. I can interpret this right-hand side that I, the product of one over the hook lengths, as a statement about probability. This is the, the statement, the probabilistic statement, that every number, every entry in the tableau is smallest in its hook. So if you think about it, if you have an arrangement of numbers in a shape, and if every number is the smallest number in its hook, then it will be standard. It has to, be, it has to satisfy both of the uh, rules that, we, uh, that define what it means for something to be a standard tableau. Why did I multiply these probabilities? Well, I just did. I just multiplied probabilities because I thought you always multiplied probabilities, but that, that's not valid. In probability, that, would, that would bring the probability police down on my tail, and they would object to that because you can't multiply probabilities unless the events are independent. So you can multiply probabilities. It's okay if the events are independent. So, but these events are not independent because, for example, if A really is the smallest element in its hook, that influences whether C is the smallest element in its, in its hook and B is the smallest element in its hook. If A is the smallest element in, in its hook, then B and T, C tend to be big. And that makes B and C less likely to be the smallest element in their hook. So they're not independent events. Nonetheless, when you multiply these numbers together, you get the correct answer, which was 1 12th. That's an amazing fact. It's actually something that's not very well understood. No one has really explained uh, satisfactorily why this method should give the correct answer, even though the method itself is blatantly false. It, it wouldn't be the first time in mathematics that they were false proofs of correct results, and that's what this is. This is an incorrect proof of a correct result. There must be two wrongs in there somehow making a right. <laughs> There's a number of correct proofs, actually a lot of correct proofs, and I'll just say a couple of words about some of them. A very nice uh, um, proof, there's actually several like this, involves taking the terms in this equation and rearranging them somewhat differently. So if I, I can rewrite that equation this way, n factorial equals f of shape, num number of standard tableau of that shape, times product of the hook lengths. What's interesting about, the, about this is that, first of all, both sides are integers. There's no fractions. And everything sort of counts. Most, most of the terms in that equation count natural objects, like this counts permutations of n things. This counts the total number of, of tableau. Remember that a tableau is just an arrangement of numbers yeah. in their shape with non no rule. With non yeah, it's a non-standard tableau. Uh, this is number of, this is standard tableau. And 
this is something. It's a product of a bunch of integers, uh, all of which are hook lengths. What one would like to do, the proof along these lines go like this. You take a tableau, maybe I'll take one of shape 3, 2, 1, and imagine that we have a random arrangement of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So this is one of the, and one of the six factorial ways of putting the numbers from 1 to 6 into that tableau. If there was some way I could systematically associate that with a standard tableau, which by the way is just nothing more than sorting. I could think of, think of it as a particular way of sorting these numbers so that they end up in order. I don't know, maybe it works to just sort them across rows. Yes, in this case it worked just to, just to sort them across rows. That will definitely not always work. Uh, but if I associate that with this together with some object that has something to do with hooks, for example, it might be the number of ways of putting numbers in these cells in such a way that each number was less than or equal to its hook. So I, so I might put ones there, I might put twos here. This has a hook, hook length three, so I, if I, put, I can put numbers one, two, or three in here. I might put a two here, for example. That would be some arrangement of numbers. And if you could figure out how this object here described the sorting process, then Think of it as sort of a set of instructions on how to sort the random tableau. And if you could associate these things in a one-to-one -one fashion, if you could f establish a one-to-one -one connection between uh, the things on this side and things on this side, you would have proved this formula. And then if you rearrange the terms again, divide the left-hand side by this, you get, you get our formula. There are several such proofs. The first proof of this, of this sort was due to Franz Blau and Zeilberger, and the second, more recent, and a uh, uh, really nice uh, um, uh, uh, proof of this kind is due to uh, Novelli, Pak, and Stoyanovsky. I'm going to tell you next the essence of a correct probabilistic proof. So it's somehow resurrecting the idea of probability, although not the exact details of the previous proof, which were wrong. I can't tell you all the details, but I can tell you that the essential idea uh, uh, comes down to the question of how do you pick a standard young tableau at random? So for example, we know that there, uh, I think I told you that there are 768 standard tableau of this shape. So this, is this, this shape would be 4, 3, that, 2, 1. That's 768, doesn't it? The number is 7, I think I didn't tell you, but no. I will tell you now. So it's 768. You can, you can apply the hook length formula and determine that there are that many tableau. So what if you wanted to pick one at random? And what, what random means is that the probability of any one is 1 over 768. So I mean uniformly at random. I mean that, that every single one of them has, has the same probability, 1 over 768, of appearing. So how do you do that? I'm, I'm not going to explain why, but the, the, the proof comes down to knowing exactly how to do that. You first decide where to put the largest number. So here we, the, num the numbers are 1 through 10, 1, 2, 3, up to 10. So you first make, the first decision you make is where to put 10. Actually. You could go in the other direction. Deciding where to put 1 is obvious. You have to put 1 in the upper left-hand corner, but it's not at all clear where you should put 10. So, but you figure out where to put 10. And then when, when that's settled, you figure out where to put 9, and then where to put 8, and then 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So you build a tableau from the outside in, and that's the way this works. Obviously, if you decided how to, where to put 10, the next step, namely where to put 9, is exactly of the same type. That is, you just have, you, you've sort of blocked off that cell. You can't use it anymore. And you're essentially deciding where to put the largest cell, or the largest number, in a tableau of this shape. So we started out with a tableau of shape 4321. Now we have one of shape 4221. And if I can give you a rule, for how to decide where to put the largest number in any shape, you just repeat that rule over and over again, and that lets you build a random tableau of any shape. So I want to tell you the rule, how to decide where to put the largest number in the standard tableau. It's something called the hook walk. Imagine I have a large shape. Imagine this is a shape with, with 100 cells. The rule is, first, pick a cell, cell at random, with probability 1 over n. So they're n cells. Could be anywhere. It could be anywhere here. And, and 
I think of it as, as uh, someone parachuting in and landing on this, where a any, any cell has an equal chance of, of being that cell. Step two is you examine the hook of that cell. So as you look everything to the right of it and everything below it, and you pick another cell. I emphasize another because it can't be the cell you're on. You must jump somewhere uh, in the hook. So for example, here I might, I might choose this cell. And then the process repeats. You repeat this over and over again. For example, now I'm, now I'm at this cell. I, I, find, I look at its hook and pick another cell in its hook. So I might go down to there. The next step, again, I examine its hook, pick a random cell in that, so, in that hook. Might, it, it can go, you can have multiple steps down. You keep on doing this until you reach a corner cell. And of course, you can't go any further because there no, there's no other cells in the hook. So you have to stop there. And finally, you put in there, and that's how this works. Then delete the cell from the shape and repeat, the, and, and repeat it using exactly the same hook, hook walk So, and until you finally you've inserted all the numbers, this time in reverse order from, from, from top to bottom or from outside in. The theorem is that that generates standard Young tableau uniformly at random. That turns out to be the essence of this probabilistic proof. This configuration this is the same shape as it was when I started two moves ago, but it's moved a little bit. And if you just follow it, it'll keep on moving like this forevermore. It's what we call the glider.